Hi, uh, I'm Stephen Dunn, and I'm here to talk about my game that I made for Project 1 in Scripting 2. Um, so this was the one where we had to create a character controller, obviously, um, and give it some sort of special ability. So first I went around to uh, that site full of all the uh, different uh, you know, models and all that, and I found a clown one that looked kind of creepy, and I found a bunch of creepy animations and added it on. Um, and I also found some different animations for jumping, one of them being a normal jump, and one of them being a running jump. And uh, I thought it would be really interesting to try and put those together. And uh, it was at that point that I actually decided to use the uh, Unity's built-in animator, rather than uh, doing it by scripting. Um, I actually think it's not too bad. Uh, if you know you have the animator selected here, you can see all the links, so it it actually makes it pretty easy to debug. Um, you can kind of see a blue line down there that shows uh, the current state it's in and all the transitions and everything. But that's not the primary purpose here. The primary purpose is having an actual cool mechanic to show off. So originally uh, I wanted to do a gravity shifting mechanic, kind of like in Gravity Rush, because I was playing that recently, but I ended up going for a telekinesis sort of thing, um, where you can hold left click and any highlighted object will move into your hand and you can drag it around, it'll sort of stay near a point next to you and uh, when you release it throws it. And uh, there's a bit of sh screen shake, a couple of particle effects, um, those were all added in this latest phase obviously. There was a couple of different rules that I chose to uh, allow telekinesis to work better. Um, originally, the force that you launch it with was divided by the mass, but uh, I got some instructive feedback uh, from you saying that it was uh, it would be really cool if it launched it like even more so. So I ended up just dividing it by the square root of the mass. So it still kind of makes it throw it a little slower, but it still feels really satisfying. Um, and you might also notice the pitch of the uh, kind of holding tone changes uh, depending on how heavy the object is. Since this one's really light. And you can also just shoot it like a bullet. Speaking of, um, this one gave me an interesting challenge because uh, it actually goes just a little bit too fast and uh, it clipped out of the wall originally um, if you shot it at the right angle. So the way I actually solved that was to dynamically change the rigid body uh, collision mode to, I think it was continuous dynamic, uh, basically the instant I let go of it. Um, and then as soon as the speed gets low enough that it won't clip through the wall, uh, it resets it back. And uh, it also uses that to determine when to stop producing particles and when to shake the screen and play that wood sound and all that. Uh, the next mechanic that I chose to add on top of what I originally had is self-telekinesis or flight. So you kind of telekinesis your own like feet or something, and uh, you just sort of float around gently. You can't use a regular telekinesis while this is active, um, but it does let you get around the place in a lot more stylish way. Uh, as for interesting challenges I had, I already mentioned a couple of them, um, but uh, I guess here's a couple more that uh, I thought were fun to solve. So uh, thankfully, so th this edge glow or edge highlight thing, um, I was very lucky to stumble upon uh, a free uh, asset that did this in the asset store. Um, but it also recommended, because it does like some pre-computation uh, when in awake, so it recommended not adding and removing the component over and over. So basically what it does is uh, it checks uh, as soon as the mouse you know intersects with uh, one of these with a, a raycast, um, it checks if it already has a outline component, and if it does, it just enables or disable it disables it, but otherwise it adds a new one with all the default settings and stuff. So basically I don't have to populate the objects with an outline from the very beginning. It can just do it dynamically as I move my mouse across, and then it also doesn't have to destroy any of them. And then I suppose the last thing I had to really solve was uh, I was using the character controller is grounded a lot for uh, you know detecting if I'm actually touching the ground, and that was very, very glitchy. Uh, I was checking I, I, you know, did a debug log and like about 50% of the time it said it was uh, on the ground and 50% of the time it wasn't. And uh, nothing I did fixed that. You know, I tried to uh, move your position down at the end of every frame, um, tried to do whole, a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, eventually I just settled with uh, uh, making a little box collider uh, located on the feet and that has worked uh, a lot better for me. So 
that's definitely the right way to go. And yeah, um, I guess I'll just show off how you die too. Might as well. You take a little bit of damage, the screen shakes, and uh, there's a big bright flash. Uh, I think it pretty well communicates that you're about to die. And uh, then when you take the final hit, you let out a big scream and die. And I also added a little custom animation uh, in the event that uh, you die while moving. Sometimes you will just fly forward, because I apparently like to uh, add different animations depending on whether you're moving. But yeah, that's my project one. I uh, hope you like it. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it, I think. Uh, took me a lot of time, for sure. But I learned a whole lot. So yeah, thanks for watching.